What do you think of when I ask, what is the most extreme artistic performance of all time? Depending on your knowledge of obscure performance artists and musicians throughout the past 70 years or so, there are a variety of different answers I might get from this question. On the performance art end of things, maybe you'll bring up infamous pieces like Rhythm Zero by Marina Abramovich or Shoot by Chris Burden. On the musical side, Gigi Allen would likely get a mention for his violent and vulgar stage antics, as well as legendary group Natarash for their dangerous performances like the one where they drove a bulldozer through the wall of a venue. The aforementioned performance art pieces involved a significant risk of bodily harm to the single performer, and the concerts by Gigi Allen and Natarash went perhaps even further by introducing a risk of bodily harm to the audience. So. How could you possibly get more extreme, more controversial, more morally questionable than that, you may ask? Well, the one thing these performances were missing was the element of death. Sure, you might get a little bruised at a Gigi Allen show, you might get cut with a few glass shards at a Natarash show, but as far as I'm aware, no one in the audience for these shows was ever actively fearing for their own life. And that is the line that Death Squad's 1999 performance titled Intent crosses. Death Squad was a noise and power electronics project created by Michael Nine, who now goes by the alias MK9. Outside of a small group of dedicated noise fans, Death Squad is a relatively obscure project, and the lack of wider knowledge of, of this project, specifically the intent performance, is what made me want to make this video in the first place. Nine began releasing tapes under the Death Squad name in 1994 many of them packaged in unconventional and transgressive ways, such as a tape containing bullet shell casings and a box set containing used razor blades and blood-smeared tapes. Many of these releases would also contain inserts with long and seemingly stream-of-consciousness prose, reading like abstract manifestos exposing the hidden filth of modern society. Even without looking at his live performances, it was clear that Death Squad was an extremely pessimistic and brutal art project, intent on displaying the blunt detail of the horrors of the world we live in, unafraid of holding anything back. Not much live footage of Death Squad exists outside of 1999's intent performance, so it's up to the imagination what exactly his other shows were like. But let's talk about the footage that does exist, and is available here on YouTube, which you can watch by clicking the link in the description of this video. The video itself doesn't actually show a whole lot, and if you watch it without knowing anything else about the backstory of this performance, you may actually be rather underwhelmed. But watching it with the background knowledge makes for one of the most intense and chilling experiences I've ever had with a piece of art. So before diving into the video itself, let's examine some written accounts of what exactly happened that night. Jason Campbell wrote a short essay on this performance, and in it mentions the flyer that was handed out to each audience member before the performance actually begins. On it, we see a lengthy manifesto-like piece of literature, very similar to the inserts in many of his tapes. Above it, there are three images, each one attached to a short caption. A razor blade for therapy, a syringe for recreation, and a gun for social control. Initially, this might not look too different from the typical edgy themes that many Power Electronics embraces, so the audience likely just thought this was a mere thematic enhancement to the noise that they were about to hear. This flyer, however, turned out to be less of an abstract accompaniment to the noise and more of a program of the performance to come, in the same way that an orchestra might hand out a paper detailing the pieces they will play for their concert. Now I'll discuss the actual content of the performance by looking at a written account and comparing that with the video footage we have on YouTube. After the intent performance, a woman who had attended it took to an industrial music discussion board on the website Yahoo to voice her complaints. She describes the performance as beginning innocently enough, with Nine simply sitting at a desk with a collage of disturbing visuals projected behind him. A menacing, noisy drone soundtracks this part of the show, seemingly pre-recorded, as Nine has no visible gear on the table and does not seem to be doing much of anything yet. After a few minutes, the noise transitions into a sample of the 1945 song Stardust by Harry Cool. Nine then takes a syringe, fills it with an unknown fluid, and injects it into his arm. Here we see the first of the three images on the flyer being put into action. Recreation. Already, we are conf confronted with a mystery. Did he actually just shoot up heroin on stage? Or was it simply an act, and the liquid was harmless and had no effect on him? 
Either way, the viewer is likely to be very unnerved at this point, not only due to the act of injection, but also to the disturbing juxtaposition of this dark imagery with such a cheerful and innocent song. But this is only step one of three. He then loads the gun sitting on his desk with what appears to be actual bullets. But this is merely foreshadowing because the next action he takes involves a different image on the poster, the razor blade, therapy. He picks up a blade and begins to cut his arms over and over, rapidly slicing away. No one tries to intervene or stop Nine from hurting himself. The performance goes on. While no blood can explicitly be seen in the low quality footage, the Yahoo woman describes profuse bleeding even after the cutting stops. Clearly this action is a step too far for some people, as a few audience members get up to leave around this time. But still, this is nothing particularly new, right? Plenty of performers have committed acts of self-harm on stage before, and performance artists like Chris Burton have done even more extreme damage to their own bodies than this, so what makes this performance so special? Well, that leads us to step three, the final image on the flyer, the gun, social control. This is the part where we have to rely more on the written account than the video, since most of the action after this point happens off screen. It's speculated that this is because the camera operator either left the venue, or was simply too focused on the performance to move the camera. According to the Yahoo woman, after Nine flips over his desk as we see in the video, and the noise becomes a terrifying, shrieking feedback tone, he takes a microphone in one hand and the gun that was sitting on his desk that he had previously loaded in the other hand and begins to aim the gun directly at audience members. In her Yahoo post, the woman who attended the show claims that he walked around where all the seats were and started pu putting the loaded gun against people's temples, including mine and my friends. He would scream various things, most of which were unintelligible, but he always had the gun right up against someone's head. At first I was too afraid to make a sudden move for fear that he might actually pull the trigger, but I managed to leave when he wasn't looking at me. Some people began to cry because they were too scared to get up and leave. Last night was the first time I actually feared for my own life. While you can't actually see the gun being aimed at the audience in the recording, you can see numerous audience members get up to leave. Perhaps the most striking part of the whole video for me was around the 22:15 mark, where you see someone run up to the back of the stage and just crumple to their knees right before someone else comes over and quickly helps them to their feet, and they walk off screen together. There are probably multiple ways to interpret this, but I saw it as someone who is just so overcome with shock and terror that they couldn't even walk for a second. The overall performance lasts about 27 minutes, followed by sparse and reluctant applause given by the few remaining audience members who managed to persevere through the whole thing, or were perhaps too scared to leave. And with that, we have Death Squad's intent, documented through video footage and written accounts. What fascinates me so much about this performance is how little we know about its true nature. While the cutting seemed pretty indisputably real, the heroin could have easily been fake and the gun could have been loaded with fake bullets. Perhaps there was never any real danger to the audience at all, but it certainly seemed like there was. If Nine was willing to slice up his arms for the sake of an artistic performance, it would seem to follow that he wouldn't have a big problem shooting up heroin, especially since he was hospitalized following an overdose mere months after this performance. So it's easy to write off this performance as nothing but an emotionally unstable, self-harming, drug-addicted maniac wielding a loaded gun and threatening to kill people. Still, I can't help but marvel at the feeling of absolute dread and terror that this video, backed by the knowledge of what is happening off screen, gives me. It's genuinely one of the most powerfully affecting pieces of art I've ever experienced, even if it does cross several moral thresholds for many people. Additionally, the way that Nine sectioned the performance into three distinct movements, each corresponding to a self-destructive tendency that many people are actually forced into in real life, is nothing short of brilliant. Watching this performance is like watching someone rapidly fall into a harmful pit of depression and mental degradation until they finally snap and begin to unleash their own self-destructive behavior against others. And what makes this performance even more disturbing is the knowledge that this pattern is real, and perhaps more common than we would like to think. For example, as Jason Campbell's essay pointed out, just a few months before this performance, the Columbine shooting occurred, leaving the country in shock as to how such a thing could happen. And Death Squad here shows us exactly how this sort of thing happens, in a graphic and blunt display of horrifying reality. 
And of course, only since then have we realized how common shootings like Columbine have become, leaving intent as a foreboding warning of sorts, and proving the point that Nine was likely trying to make with this performance, time and time again. Hard drugs as recreation, self-harm as therapy, and gun violence as social control. These are unfortunate but very real aspects of the world we live in, and they will not go away anytime soon, regardless of how much people may try to ignore it. So overall, I think it's pretty clear that there is artistic merit and a meaningful message behind this performance. However, it is certainly debatable whether or not the way Michael Nine went about conveying it was ethically acceptable. So I'd like to hear from you, the viewer. Tell me what you think about this performance. Is it a brilliant masterpiece of transgressive performance art? Did it have good intent but go too far? Or is it simply a dangerous display of aggression from a mentally unstable lunatic? Let's start a conversation. Just remember to be respectful and open-minded. Thanks for watching this video.